There's also not a school, medical school in the United States that I'm aware of that teaches something that's probably more important than that. And that's how to evaluate a study. Mm. How to read a study and, uh, and evaluate whether the, it's deductive valid. Deductive logic, yeah. basically. If you can't read a study and evaluate it, see if it's valid, then reading all the conclusions in the world isn't going to make you a better doctor. Right. And, and, and we even have the extreme cases that we had last year in 2010 with these studies that were done on Vioxx, that it comes out, the, the Dr. Scott Rubin, who's the doctor that was on the, the Pfizer Speakers Bureau, has come out and admitted that he falsified all the studies for the, that, that went into the, the, the legalization, yeah. the approval of Vioxx. Yet no one was able to read no his one, studies right. and determine that, which is, to me, criminal. Which seems like, in, being in the fact that he made up all the studies, if, you, if people had actually read the studies, they would have been able to see some inconsistencies. Yes. If they had actually read the studies. But these studies that he did went into the approval process on Vioxx, which has killed, what, over 50,000 people? Over 50,000. So you have, you have uh, these, these uh, studies that are done to approve these drugs are, are being falsified regularly. And there have been numerous uh, studies done on the studies to show that anywhere from three out of five to four out of five of these studies are just bogus. Yeah. That are being printed in medical journals and then preached as gospel truth for these doctors because that's where the doctors get their CPE is the medical journals. Medical journals which have the big million dollar ads by the pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. in the centerfold. And so all they're going to be preaching in these medical journals is drugs because they don't want to lose their biggest advertiser. But the bottom line is we now are going back into many of these different cases and seeing that these studies that are used to uh, approve these drugs are being falsified. There's a real problem with, as we were talking about before, good old Mark Twain, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Statistics. <laughs> and you can really manipulate statistics quite easily. On the other hand, studies can be set up that can't be manipulated. If you're doing direct cell counts, for example. But I'll tell you a funny story. That's not even true. I mentioned before this doctor in Mexico that did this test, small test, trial test with AIDS patients. One of the large pharmaceutical companies that produces the AIDS cocktail was using a laboratory in Mexico. It just so happens that the four patients that he took for this study, pilot study, were going to the same lab. Well, he sent them to a different lab for viral loads. And they were all astounded that their viral loads were as high as they were. So it was the lab. Because a week before, their viral load had only been X, and now it was Y. So the laboratory that was working for the pharmaceutical company... Ah, oh, they were working for them, weren't they? ...was working for the pharmaceutical company. Oh. So you really have to be careful on how studies are done, where they're done. There are ways to set up protocols for studies that can't be gotten around. You won't see them. They don't set them up that way, do they? No. Uh, AIDS is a good example. The cocktail increases certain lymphocyte cell counts. It also decreases other lymphocyte cell counts. They don't mention those in the studies. Those are not ever measured. Okay. When you send the patient in for uh, their cell counts, those cells that are decreased or damaged by the drugs are never mentioned and measured. So they're, they only measure the ones that it improves. Right. When really, if you looked at the totality of the test, it's at best keeping them at the same place and most likely decreasing their immunity. It actually, most of the AIDS patients now are dying from cancer and dying from complications from diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a result of the drugs. Right. And there are enough studies to show that. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting the way they do these studies and the way they manipulate the data in the studies. So you have your pre predetermined conclusion. 
mm -hmm. that that, uh, that that they're going to have for these studies, so that they can continually sell the drugs. Right. And mm -hmm. FDA approval, as you know, is a joke. You yeah. know, every anybody that asks me, is this FDA approved or this approach FDA approved? I don't even want them in my office. Yeah. Because they haven't done their homework. They don't know who's making up or who's doing the approval process for the FDA. And it's sure not the doctors. The doctors that are doing research for the Food and Drug Administration are never followed. They're almost invariably overruled by the board of directors on what's approved. Mm -hmm. Which is what happened specifically when aspartame was approved. Yes. All the doctors that researched aspartame back in the late 70s said and no early way. 80s said no way in heck should this ever be approved. It causes brain lesions, causes brain cancers, causes tumors, causes a whole variety of other health, symptoms, or health issues, health problems. And then what happened? FDA commissioner overruled them. I had a friend that was one of the doctors that was fighting it. Hmm. And you know, what do they do? Quit their job? Right.